George Finley said, Hi Tig, thank you for taking some time to do these Q&As. Before going into this question, I want to first say I have nothing but respect for you and the dedication you have to your craft and creating the best work possible, or at the very least, that is how it appears. Considering your discussion of history theory, I struggle to imagine a better person to ask about this subject, but it may come off as well bellicose. It actually doesn't. It comes across as if it's being asked by someone with depression or someone that has embraced nihilism. Uh, I don't know if that is the case or not, but that's how it comes across. Cutting to the chase. Why study most history? I understand that certain historical events like, say, the H of World War II may be stark and important reminders of the terrors of ideological perversion, but other facets like, say, Manstein being a cheeky liar as entertaining a concept as that is, what is the point? If it's a matter of practicing a skill, where does this skill get used? And perhaps more importantly, when concerning vast swaths of historical literature, from what the Norse Danes liked to drink to the fashion sense of the Romans, does it really matter? I understand that not all this will be in your purview or that of serious historians, but I can't help but feel when I engage in historical content, so what? Can you help me with this dilemma? Thanks, Best George. Many people don't see the point in studying history. They think it's boring. They think it's just names and dates. They don't see how learning about what happened yesterday can help them today. They just think it's a waste of time. They assume there's no practical application of history in their day-to-day -day lives. You know, I know Manstein is a cheeky liar, but that doesn't help me get a promotion or teach me how to change the tire on my car. It doesn't impact my life, right? But is this really the case? History has practical applications that go beyond kings and dates. It taught me how to lead others and forge a successful team when I worked in retail. It has taught me economics and finance and the important distinction between money and currency. It has taught me to never believe a politician and to always be skeptical of the narrative pumped out by the lamestream media. It has taught me that life is brutal and short and that people don't learn from the mistakes of the past. You cannot help other people unless they want to be helped. And most people don't want to be helped. At which point, you've got to leave them to their fate and look after number one, as harsh as that may sound. Anyone who's watched my history theory video knows that history is not the study of the past. We can't study the past. We can only study the records of the past. And every record of the past we have, whether that be swords, castles, audio, video, or words in books, were created by human hands that were powered by human minds. As a result, when we study history, we're not studying the past per se, we are studying ourselves. We're studying the human mind. History, therefore, is the study of the human condition. It is the best way for us to understand how other people think and how they view the world. What we're actually doing when we study history is getting multiple different perspectives, striking them together and testing which perspectives make the most sense given the evidence and the interpretation. During this debate, the best narratives rise to the top and the others sink down and get abandoned. I've said this before, history lies in the heart of the debate, but what that really means is that the truth lies in the heart of the debate, because the ultimate goal of every historian is to get to the objective truth. During a historical debate, you'll find some people saying they know the truth, but their interpretation doesn't match the evidence, which they then dismiss. Others will use all the evidence, but won't be able to interpret it correctly. Others will speak first without thinking, while others will contradict themselves and then ignore their contradictions because their ideology tells them that they're right. Many will rely on emotions, assumptions, and beliefs to convince you. Others will use cold, hard reason and logic to rationally support their cause. What this debate is doing is teaching you, training you to think differently and to think better. You're not only moving closer to the objective truth, but you're also learning how to question things, how not to take things at face value, and how to debate and make a case for something one way or another, and learn how to be humble if you're proven to be incorrect. These are all skills that have a direct and positive impact on your life, 
whether that's when you're listening to someone tell you something and you detect the contradictions about their narrative, proving that they're either lying or have something wrong, or whether it's structuring an argument or an essay, or conducting a presentation and working as a team, managing other people, or brainstorming other ideas, the possibilities are endless. There are two things at the heart of every story. The first is character, or more specifically, character development, and the other is conflict. We are the characters at the heart of our own story, and we are in conflict with the other antagonisms around us, other people, the setting, monsters, and our inner demons. The purpose of our life, then, is to strive and thrive in what is a hostile universe, and we can only do that by learning from our mistakes. Now, when I say our mistakes, what I mean is not just our individual mistakes, but the mistakes others of our species have made previously. We can look at how other people lived, performed, acted, shaped the world around them, or interacted with others. We can learn from all of that, then take the best traits or tools or decisions and apply them to our lives so that we can survive today and then thrive tomorrow. The last thing we want to do, though, is learn the wrong lessons or believe something false, because if we do that, it can distort our perception of the world and lead us to fail at life. So it's important that we filter out the lies and the misconceptions and discover the truth through free, open and honest debate. This is why Manstein being a cheeky liar is important. Nobody likes liars. And why is that? Well, because liars aren't telling you the truth and can get you and others in trouble. As characters in our own story, in a hostile universe, liars are antagonists to our survival. And maybe you know someone who lies a lot and gets you into trouble. But how do you know that they're lying? Are they actually lying or are they telling you the truth but your perception of the reality is currently distorted so you only believe that they're lying to you when in fact they're not? A good way of knowing is to see how other liars operate. I can't talk about the specific liar you might know, but we can talk about a liar that everyone knows, like Manstein or Halder. We can see what they said, understand the reasons they lied, their motivations, or figure out how they manipulate the truth to get what they wanted, and how this led to distortions and contradictions, which in turn led to the lie being exposed. Also, it's not just names and dates. When we look back in the past, we're looking into ourselves. We're choosing what's important to us and what lessons we want to learn. For some of you, the history of how people live their day-to-day -day lives, what the Danes drank, may be of great interest. For others, they may want to seek romance and marriage, and therefore want to know what war paint the native picks wore on the battlefield so that maybe they could apply similar principles to their own fashion sense. Maybe you want to know why men carry their brides across the threshold of their houses. A historical explanation I gave as part of my public versus private video. Maybe you want to know how to conduct a business or open a new trade route or explore the world around you. In which case, businessmen, economics and explorers may be of high interest to you. Others may want to know how to become great leaders. In which case, studying how the leaders of old conducted themselves and how they thought outside the box or didn't or how they reacted to the unexpected may offer lessons for you to learn, allowing you to perform well when you're presented with similar situations. The development of weapons, the training of warriors, or the tactical and operational aspects of large-scale warfare may be of interest to those in the military, or those wanting to win games, or be martial artists, or boost the morale of their employees. Maybe your country is at war, <clears throat> or you or your family has been impacted by war, or maybe you expect war in the future. Maybe you want to learn how to survive that war. Maybe you want to learn what inflation is and how people protected their wealth from it in the past, right? All these could be reasons for your interest in history, but I think if you dig deeper, the reason is because you want to learn something about the past so that you can use that knowledge to better your life today. Churchill famously said, the farther back you can look, the farther forward you are likely to see. In other words, the further we look back in the past, the further we can see into the future. 
We can't predict the future, but we can use history to gauge probabilities of what could happen next. For example, the yield curve is just inverted, meaning that there's going to be a recession soon, probably next year. There's a rhythm in history, and if you get into the swing of it, you can avoid stepping on other people's feet. If you fail to even perceive the rhythm, the universe will wipe you out. And so while there is a subjective aspect to this, meaning that our interests are specific to us as individuals, my interests are not the same as yours, we're all trying to learn so that we can improve, which will offer us a better chance of survival. Many people go through life minding their own business and then get blindsided by events that they had no idea were coming. Others who were keyed into the music heard the same old patterns and could guess what was coming next. They weren't surprised when recessions hit or when wars started or when politicians offered totalitarianism to the solution of every problem. Hmm. George said that when it comes to events like the H of World War II, we're reminded of the terrors of ideological perversion. And the reason why this is important is because ideological perversion is a threat to our own survival. The totalitarian state is a universal antagonism which destroys the individual character in his own story. We must avoid the forces around us that wish to enslave and murder us for their own selfish gain while claiming that they're doing what's right for humanity. The road to hell is paved with good intentions, as the proverb goes. You wouldn't know this, and you wouldn't recognise the same warning signs unless you understood the true motivations behind those who wish to enslave us. And you can find that out by reading into the hate of World War II, or the ideologies behind it, or something similar. Now, you might assume that some topics of history are more important than others, and you would be right, because value is subjective. One man's trash is another man's treasure. You need to understand your own concerns, your own wants, and your own needs, and you need to figure out what it is that you want to learn, or what is or is not of interest to you. And you need to understand that life is finite. One day you will not exist, and that day will come sooner than you think. So you haven't got the luxury to waste your time on things that do not benefit you, things that don't help you survive and thrive and better yourself. Therefore, you need to hone in on the subjects that interest you the most. Ignore the ones that don't, and you need to specialise. Become a master of a specific field. Many wrongly believe that they don't have time to read a bunch of books on one narrow topic. But I would say it's the opposite. We've not got the time to read a bunch of books on a wide range of topics. You cannot learn to swim if all you do is dip your toes in the water. You have to jump in with supervision. If all you're doing is reading one book on a subject, then jumping to the next subject, you're probably not seeing much of a benefit, and you're not honing your craft, and you may even be picking up false conclusions just because you're only getting a superficial overview of the world around you. Also, you need to really specialise. You can't eat an elephant in one go, and you don't want to learn every swimming technique ever created when you jump in for the first time. You want to learn something simple. Get it right, and then move on to something more difficult. So, when you're choosing your topic, don't just look at the whole of World War II. Look at a specific theatre. Then choose a specific campaign, and then battle, or maybe even a unit, or a person, or maybe just an event. You want to go as specific as possible to a topic that is of great interest to you, something that has some sort of debate surrounding it, or a question that you want answered. Make it concrete. Confirm that the thing happened. And how do you do that? by using the sources. Start with the secondary sources, the works of historians, because they will be your supervision, they will help you learn to swim. But don't have one guide, have multiple guides, right? Two heads are better than one, and two historians will offer different perspectives and interpretations. You will discover the debates and the lies and the lessons that you want to learn. Then, when you've read a few books on a particular subject, you may want to move on to the primary sources, the memoirs, diaries, and documents, to see if you can flesh out things even further, helping to come to your own conclusions. Some say you can't trust the historians, but that's not true. You can't trust 
one historian, but you can trust multiple because they'll all be giving you different perspectives which will help you discover the truth. History lies in the heart of the debate, and like Newton, the reason I can see further is because I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. You should too. To become a master of something, you have to spend time on it. You have to do the work. You have to put more than a little bit of effort into it. It may seem daunting at first, and every time I go to make a new video, it feels overwhelming, knowing how much there is to do. But you'll be surprised how quick things can develop, and the payoff is huge. So, as the character in your own story, decide what it is that you want to learn. Figure out what topics really interest you, pick one, and go specific with it. Then ask what questions do you want answered. Buy five books on that topic? And then scour the internet for sources, articles, documentaries, and PDFs. Make sure you take notes, then spot the contradictions or mistakes. Find the answers to unanswered questions, and then come to your own conclusions, and then discuss them with others. Ultimately, you want to be changing your behavior to reflect the lessons that you've learned, so that you can better yourself. And, of course, don't repeat the mistakes that others have made in the past. The bottom line is this. You shouldn't be studying most history. You should only be studying the history that you find meaningful. Leave the rest to others. Learn the lessons that you want to learn, because it's your life, so it's your history. That's the point of it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.